Hello, it's James again. For those familiar with exploding dots, I bet you can't help look at this and not think a 2-1 machine. I mean, after all, we've got here a row of dishes all labelled by the powers of 2. And it's clear that two grapes in any one dish, two fours for example, kaboom, are equivalent to one eight. One grape, one place to the left. And two grapes in this dish, two eights, kaboom, are equivalent to one grape, one place to the left. One sixteen, two eights is sixteen. And so on, two sixteens is thirty-two, etc. And we can unexplode, for example, one four, I could unexplode it and make it two twos instead. Or I could take one two and unexplode it and make that two ones instead. Two ones is equivalent to two two uh, to one two and vice versa. Two fours is equivalent to one eight, one eight is equivalent to two four. So we have explosions and unexplosions at our disposal. And in fact, if I do think of this as a two one machine and put in, say, all 26 grapes, here they go in the rightmost box. In fact, let me even write down what's going on. So here's 26 grapes in the rightmost box. There'll be some explosions in this two one machine. Two explode, become one. Two become one. Two become one. So in fact, there'll be 13 explosions, each explosion making a grape. So that means I'll get 13 grapes in here which my exact counting means it's that, and what, there'll be no grapes left behind, bingo. So I get 13 grapes in the next dish over. And then there, some more explosions will occur. Two become one, two become one. In fact, I see there's six explosions, am I right? Six explosions make six great, kaboom, kapow, gazing, gazoop, gazobble, gazibble. Leaving, what, one behind? One grape behind, bingo. All right, so far so good. There is six grapes in the next dish over. And then, three more explosions. Kaboom, grape, kaboop. Whoops, sticky grapes, kaboom, and kaboop. Kizing, leaving none behind. So we've got three in this dish. And then one more explosion. Kajubal, grape, leaving one behind. And then that's it, explosions are done. So actually the two one machine will eventually get you, if you think of it this way, a code for the beginning number using nothing but one grape at most per dish. In fact, we've got the code 11010. One, this is called the binary code of the number 26. Um, so all the 2-1 machine codes are also called binary codes. I guess we've just proved that every number does indeed, in fact, have a binary code. You can always get it down to one group grape per dish. Grand. But what's interesting here is what I wrote on the paper. Suppose you didn't have grapes and dishes at hand and you still wanted to work out the binary code of 26 for some reason. So what we did, I first wrote down the number 26 on the right and then I halved it and we got 13. So how many grapes appeared here? And then 13, we halved it again. Half of 13, well actually it's six and a half, but we knew there was one grape going to be left behind because we had an odd number there. So really I just wrote down six, I ignored the half, one grape got left behind. Then we halved again from explosions and got three grapes the next dish over. And then we halved again uh, from explosions and had one grape here. Well, half of three is one and a half, but we knew one grape was being left over. So actually we just halved it and just rounded it down to one. Bingo. So essentially, what we could do is write down the number you're interested in on the right, in this case 26, and just keep halving and ignore any fractions that occur, because fractions mean, oh, that's a place where one grape got left behind. Now look what happens here. Look for the odd numbers on the list you wrote. There's an odd number there, there's an odd number there, there's no odd numbers there, there's an odd number there, there's no odd numbers there. We've got one odd number, one odd number, no odd numbers, one odd number, no odd numbers. Whoa. And that exactly matches the binary code of the number we're interested in, in this case, 26. Wow. In fact, it kind of makes sense if you think about it for a little while, because the odd numbers are the places where a grape got left behind. 13 was odd, we knew a grape was going to be left behind, therefore that one really is part of the binary code. For even numbers, no grapes got left behind, that's fine. For odd numbers, a grape got left behind, and all the rest. So there we are. You can actually write out the binary codes of numbers by doing this halving, and make life easier for yourself, just ignore fractions, and then see the placement of the odd numbers in the list you get left behind. Now this actually has a lovely application, so I'm going to leave off with a puzzle by doing a multiplication problem in a weird way. Suppose we now wanted to work out something like 26 times 9. I'm going to suggest the following strange method. I've got two numbers, 26 and 9. I'm going to halve the numbers on the left and double the numbers on the right. Half of 26 is 13, double 9 is 18. I'm going to halve again on the left and double on the right. Half of 13 is, well, 6 and a half, but I'll also ignore remainders just like I did before, and double uh, 18 is 36. Then I'll halve the one on the left, that's 3, double the one on the right, 72, and half the one on the left, half of 3 is 1 and a half, ignore, ignore fractions, and double the one on the right is 144. All right, now, 
What I'm going to do now is cross out those rows that begin with an even number. Cross out the one that begins with a 6. Cross out the one that begins with a 26. That leaves behind, on the right, an 18 that survives, a 72 that survives, and a 144 that survives. Add those up. 18 and 72 is what, um, 80, 10, that's 90, plus 144 makes 234. I claim 234 is indeed the answer to 26 times 9. So my question to you is, why does that crazy doubling method, halving and doubling method of multiplication actually work? And you can see the connection here between the binary representation that's going on. So as a little hint, what's that 18 really? It's really double what I wanted to multiply by. That's four times what I want to multiply. That's eight times what I want to multiply by. That's 16 times what I wanted to multiply by. So somehow we selected the, the double, the eights, and the 16s. Very curious to multiply by 26. All right, grand. Who doesn't love mysteries? Have fun with it.